Hello everyone and today is Monday and we're excited that you are back to join us for our one. Um, this week you are going to learn um, how to use value still in a successful composition. Um, as you see here on the green screen behind me, this is an example of your project that you're going to be working on that is due Friday. Um, this week and it's incorporating shading. And you're going to use geometric shapes and lines to create this composition. Um, so what we want to do today is go over this project and get you acclimated to how to do this particular piece. Um, and remember our essential question, how can we use shading to create a successful composition? And the way we do that is by shading from dark to light. So let's go ahead and look at this now. So I'm going to share my screen. Now, the first step that you're going to do for this particular project is you're going to create a border. Okay, so that's the first step. And I'm going to show you a video and some options that you can do um, to make your piece look excellent. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that border there. Okay, now the second thing that you're going to do for this particular project is you're going to slice your page up. So you do need a ruler. So we're just going to go across our page, different sections, and we're just going to cut it up with a using lines. We're just going to slice it up using lines. Okay. It's going to go this way. And I just want to create several different sections with this project. As you can see here, I'm just going to keep going until I have a lot of sections. It's going to go right here to the corner. And I'm going to cross in here, and get another section going right there. And I think that's pretty good. I'm going to make one more section. So this is how many sections you should kind of have roughly covering up um, the whole piece, okay? Now, I'm going to get something like, you can get something at home that you can trace like a top of a can or on top of a container, a cup, um, and you can use that to create your circles. So I'm just going to make some circles and I'm just going to put those in there and I'm just going to make sure you can see them, okay? And they're going to be various sizes, okay? So let me make it so you can see it. Let me make them black so you can see. Um, you're going to do this in pencil, okay? So this whole project is in pencil, it's not in color. Remember that it's various sizes, so you want to make sure that your circles are different sizes throughout your piece. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to shrink this down and make it a little bit. And they can over, I want them to overlap each other. Okay, so you see how that circle is overlapping the other circles and it's going to be kind of big, so that's fine. Okay, so preview. All right, and we're going to put another one over here to overlap. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. And we got to make one here and we're going to kind of reduce the size. I might make it bigger so it can cover several circles. Okay. So you see that there. Okay. Now you can also have a circle to come off the page, like, you know, a, ha a half a circle there. You know, you can do one here um, to go off the page too. There's no problem with that. Now what you're going to do is you're going to shade each of these sections. You're not going to shade everything in right here. You're going to break it down. And this, let's just look at this section right here. We're going to shade this section from dark to light. So each of your sections, are going to be shaded. So um, I'm going to just use this tool to help me shade up here on the computer. But you are shading each of these sections from dark to light. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to shade this. There you go. So now you see that it's fading out from dark to light. That's what we want for this particular project. You want it to fade out from dark to light and you see a gradual change of value. Every time I'm going to exit 
every time that you get to a different section, you shade um, it a different way. So every time you get to a section, I'm going to switch the, the tone and go opposite way so that instead of it being um, dark to light, it's going to be light to dark. Make sure I get in that whole circle. So I'm going to have to de deselect it and redo it again. All right, so now I'm up against this line and I'm going to shade this part of the circle in. And this time it's going to go from light to dark um, because we see that this is going from dark to light. So we need to switch this. So I'm going to switch it so that, that way you can see that the shading is different. Okay, so you can kind of see example here that the shading is going from dark to light and you want to switch your shading each time, okay? So what we're going to do now is I want you to see a video to teach you how to shade and teach you how this project is going to go. I'm going to show you two examples, okay? Hey ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're going to do a value project and that value project is to teach some shading. Um, if you're <clears throat> new to the art project, please subscribe down below. Uh, if you watch this video all the way through and you like it, please hit the like button at the bottom and um, share my video on some social media, please. So. First thing I'm going to do with this project is put a border around the paper. I'm going to put a half inch border around the paper. And I put a half inch border around the paper for several reasons. The first reason is it actually makes the, the whole presentation look a lot more professional. When the whole thing is completed, it's going to look like a professional artist did it. The second reason that I put the border on the paper is because if you're going to have it framed or matted, part of the picture is going to be covered up if you make your picture go all the way to the edges. So putting a half inch border gives a place for the mat to, uh, for the paper to be stuck to the mat or um, taped to the mat and without covering it up. The third reason is because that way students have just a little bit less paper that they actually have to fill in. So when I'm putting this uh, border on here, <clears throat> I measure on the edge, uh, out from the edge, a half inch twice, once at the bottom and once at the top. And then I put my ruler on those two dots and draw a straight line from the uh, bottom, uh, top to the bottom, or the bottom to the top. Um, you got to put two measurements. If you only put one, then you have no way of knowing that you're actually the same distance from the edge of the paper all the way up and down it. So um, be sure and put two marks, one at the top, one at the bottom, or one on the left and one on the right. That way you have uh, two marks to line up. Zero calories, zero sugar, nothing to weigh you down. Fresh sparkling water in seconds, soda stream. Good grammar and spelling are important. But if you want to write essays that inspire, after I got the border on it, I put some circles. You can divide your paper up any way you want to. Um, but I'm using a little plastic safety compass to make some circles uh, in random places, some going off the side of the uh, paper, uh, some small, some uh, really large. And I'm just using this to divide the paper up. Um, after I use the compass, I'm going to use a ruler to divide it up even more. I think uh, a good rule of thumb is to have at least nine uh, maybe even at least 12 uh, divisions on your paper to make this easy. Uh, you don't want too many uh, divisions, but uh, obviously you don't want to have too few either. So I think uh, 12 or more is really good and probably uh, less than 25, somewhere between 12 and 25.
when I was doing this, I had a little bit of uh, technical difficulty, and my phone kind of went kaput, and I didn't get the very first part of all the shading. Uh, so as you see here, I've got almost half of it done uh, <clears throat> because uh, I'd worked on a bunch of it and filmed it, videoed it, and um, and it didn't work. I'm using a 3B pencil to do the shading. 3B is not really a whole lot darker than a number two pencil, so if you got a number two pencil, uh, you can use that, just a, any regular pencil. Uh, I usually try not to use uh, a mechanical pencil, but um, you know some students have used mechanical pencils and that's fine. So in shading it in, I decided that I would make my highlight at the lower right hand corner of every shape that way it's consistent and that way it looks as though the light source is coming from the bottom right um, that means that I'm making the upper left side as dark as I can um, <clears throat> I'm actually going around the entire thing with black I'm making it as dark as I can with my pencil all the way around and then kind of fading it out to the highlight. So when I start at the edges, it is the shape of the shape that I'm shading in. But as I get closer to the highlight, I try and make it a little bit rounder. Uh, so I'm fading from whatever the shape is and into the middle into like a circle. The highlight itself is uh, usually kind of a circle. I think of this project a little bit like uh, the Karate Kid and how Mr. Miyagi told him to uh, wax on and wax off or paint the fence up and paint the fence down. He was training his hands to do certain movements and to do those movements by instinct, by reflex. And so this is kind of the same thing. By shading in all of these little areas, you are teaching your hand to be able to press down hard or release the pressure and make it a little bit lighter as you need to in in different degrees of pressure uh, most students it seem like have a really heavy hand and so if you you know if you find your hand is just like really heavy and uh, you have a hard time drawing light to get it right this is a great practice to help train you um, to do different degrees of pressure all right so you can see right here I'm like drawing really really dark and then I'm kind of fading it out a little bit it's not as dark in the corner uh, not as dark away from the corners and then as I get to the middle I've got to have a really really light pressure uh, to keep from making it uh, too dark near the highlight So uh, right now I have about 430 something subscribers and I'm pretty excited about um, growing my YouTube channel and getting more subscribers. I really appreciate everybody who has uh, subscribed to me and I hope that uh, you'll spread the word and help me to get better at what I do. Leave me a comment down below if you got any ideas or suggestions um, if you think I should talk more let me know if you think I should talk less let me know you really can't say anything to hurt my feelings um, I want to do the best I can on these videos so feel free to let me know it down below and if you haven't already subscribed if um, maybe you're a student and your teacher showing you this video please go home and subscribe to my channel and uh, watch it you know you don't have to wait on your teacher to show you these videos uh, you can learn hopefully from me and impress your teachers when the time comes to do a certain project or whatever with the new skills that you have hopefully by trying out some of the things that I do in my video um, not all of my videos are going to be projects like this some of them are just you know watch me doodle or watch me draw I'm going to do some painting videos I'm going to do some collaborations with other artists there's just going to be a lot of art related um, things All right, so guys, I want you to see how he's shading, um, and I want you to see that you want to have certain light sections in your piece, 
um, and he's going from dark to light. And you really want to um, focus on every section. And you see how he's curving around at the edges so that it creates like a circular effect. That's what we want for this particular project. Um, and you see how he's kind of just getting it lighter the closer he gets to the center. So think about that and use that when you do your project. And let's look at the end result. Um, just, you can kind of see there how it looks sort of like bubbles. Um, so that's what we want. And you can see the example behind me um, of a student's work there, um, very nicely done too. Now I want to show you, I want to um, show you also um, another way that you can do your project. Look at this one, okay? Now with this one, you see they did the same thing, but they incorporated a font or the letter um, of their name, okay? Um, I really like this because you can put this in a frame and it looks really nice too. But notice that they didn't use um, circles, but they could have added circles on top of this too. Um, so this is another option um, if you want to do it that way. But if you do it this way, you have to make sure that your letters look very crisp and they're very neat because I take our points for smudging. So you notice that in the other piece um, that he had a piece of paper while he colored on top of it so it wouldn't smudge. I don't want any smudging on this project, just shading with the pencil. Um, so if you want to do it this way, it needs to look just similar like this. It needs to have that shading even around the pencil, around the letter, shading all in the composition and everything like that. So if you're going to do it this way, you have two options. You can do it this way or you can do it the one I just showed you with the circles, which is really good too. Um, so go ahead and figure out what you want to do. Um, today, actually, I think you are going to actually um, going to start your sketch today. So you're going to start your sketch and you're going to upload the example of your sketch um, on the piece. So you're going to upload your sketch um, today. Of You're going to start this project and I just want to see your progress on it. Um, it is due on Friday. So you don't have an extra week to work. This, this project is due on Friday. Okay because we have to kind of keep make sure that we are following along with the schedule and making sure that we have our work done completed um, before the end of the six weeks. So go ahead and start the project, upload your progress, and let me see what you have. Make sure you use a ruler or use some type of edge so that your edges are crisp. Make sure you do not smudge, um, but you want your project to look great, and I'm excited to see them. Okay, any questions, let me know. Thank you.